Okay, we're thank we're, you. We're live. You ready? Yes. Are you live? On. You're on. It. Go. Action. I'm gonna stand up because I cannot stand sitting this long. Really? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna mess up. I've gotta stand. I can't look at people from there you go. see their heads. It's it's the school teacher in me. So okay, I got bored. Apologize for that. Take two. Mental state. Um. Yes. I know most of you, but I don't know all of you. And welcome. You're the people who show your interest, and I told Christy we'd have about 40 people, and uh, we at least got a few chairs for you. The other people coming in will be a little later. Um, the team meeting this year I think is pretty vital, and I do want to introduce people who are my coaches, and that's him. He's the only one that showed so far. <laughs> Demetrius Goins um, has his own program at Shoreview Chess. And his program is full right now, just about. Yeah, that's great. Um, and two of, his, two of the other teachers that we have with us, Clarence and Alice, couldn't make it. Yeah. They're, uh, well, they're not team anyway. That's right. Yeah, they're team. They're on club teacher. Um, they're working with him, so. I gave you a little introduction about the instructors with their names. There's also a web page with the instructors on them, and since they have not changed this year for the team, you can check them out at that point. I think we have a really good you know, group of instructors. Um, one that's not with the team has come in from the club, but she's our my uh, executive assistant. We're calling her executive assistant because that's a nice title for low pay. <laughs> okay. And that's Joyce. Some of you may know Joyce standing back here from the Cal House of Chess, where she's been working and tutoring and working with the kids as well for a number of years now. And uh, she's been teaching as well for Success Chess. Um, we have at least one major parent helper here, which is Christy. Hi. She's been a lot of help, especially with the tournaments and getting money food. for the PTOU. Yeah. 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 So food. if you, your kids has need food, doesn't have the money, come to see me. And yeah. I know who you are. I'll invite you. I'll give them food, no problem. And she's helped make arrangements for the group to go to the Nationals. Yes. So specifically, she's going to talk a little later about the nationals. To girls' Nationals uh, in well, in Chicago. Yes, yeah, made arrangements on the International too. All right, I want to move on to the major change, and that is White Belt Chess is no longer just White Belt Chess. It is now PTO White Belt Chess, Parent Teachers Organization. Now that's a change this year that I'm not exactly sure how it's going to totally impact us. I have some ideas of what's happening, and I'll fill you in on why and what's occurred. First of all, we have been at least sponsored by, y, uh, by the PTO ever since we began, which was 1988. This is our 25th year, and I'm only 26, so, you know, <laughs> before when I went to school here, no. Um, my boys started at Y Bell when it opened. Okay, at least one of them did the only came in the next year, so they joined in 1987, and of course, I stayed on, and now I've got a grandson who I'm trying to figure out how to get into White Bell. <laughs> because they live in Niles, and I understand we're overcrowded this year. And they brought people in from other schools, but the, the population has grown in the area. So we must have a lot of you young parents coming and bringing new kids with us. So thank you for the White Bell. Um, I was involved, for whatever background it is, for getting White Bell open in the first place. Just to let you know, the school board did not want the school. And the school board did not want the school here. They didn't think it was necessary. They said at the most there were only going to be 500 kids in the area. Once again, we have great parents in the area. And the parents, with their computer skills, Silicon Valley, went out did surveys, went door to door, and created good graphic charts. 
and this was before even the internet was getting here. Yeah. And they went to the school board and laid it all out, and they showed that the school needed to be open for 840 kids, which was the original numbers that came in. And you weren't here, but they were lined up in the streets trying to get into kindergarten. Now, one of the not one of the groups, of course, of the numbers that came in that were working to get the school open were the people who had been moved over to Warm Springs because the other side of Mission Boulevard was also coming, so some of you are aware of that. And the program, in short, um, I funded for about five years on my own with my kids. And then somebody said, what the hell are you doing that for? And so now I'm charging them. But part of the reason is I decided with the growth in the program, I couldn't handle it alone. And to have guys like Demetrius, an expert chess teacher, to bring these people in was mandatory, really. As you know, we've got international masters. We've got one of the best groups you could ask for in any program. And obviously, they're paid well. And I've got a waiting list of teachers who would love to come. Not just because we pay well, but because they want to be with the top program, to be candid. Okay? So... The PTO was confronted by a new facilities manager, and the school was, and they decided to strict ad ad strictly adhere to the rules that the district has. <coughs> Under those rules, the PTO could not just sponsor us, they had to run it, which translates to, at this particular point, all of the income, all of the Expenses are being done in a spreadsheet that's going to the PTO. And if there's any profit, and it's gone back and forth with a couple of hundred dollars over the years, um, we'll go to the PTO. So it's become a full PTO pro pro program. One of our mothers, who's a CPA, will be auditing the books. So that is definitively a change. How is it going to affect? us, well, at this point, I don't know. I'm not sure it should affect us in any way. Okay. Um, but, again, we'll see what the bureaucracy does. But we are at least still here. It took a little while and there was confusion, and I was really worried because the confusion came about because I am a contractor for Success Chess to run the tournaments. And so, my mistake, I was lumping the two together and for the tax purposes. And with that, the school district felt success just should be running it. And it's a nonprofit. There was no way I could run it as a profit, uh, considering this is a very fast statement. The fact is that a profit organ for profit organization pays three times the amount. So instead of instead of paying uh, $30 for the use for an hour of the multi-use room, it would have been close to 90 And you know, So give me an idea that, you know, it, it had to be. So, again, we are under the PTA, thanks to, you know, under the PTO, <laughs> originally it was the PTA here, uh, thanks to a couple of people who got involved, including Faria, who just walked in, um, and of course, on top of that, the PTO president is Rob, Rob Chan, who also, children have been with the chess program for a while. And we almost had the treasurer. But <laughs> Christy's husband was going to be treasurer, but he stepped aside. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I'm just has some her to use here. Um, now, I've made some changes which have nothing to do with the PTO. They have to do with me, in a sense. The big change that you've seen is there are now three teams. And part of the reason was that last year I finally had had it. Um, I was tired of parents putting their kids into the program to be candid. And I love the parents because we wouldn't be here to tell you the truth if we weren't the parents. Sometime, one time the children asked me, why are you still with White Bell Chess? And I told them because of the parents, and they got upset. It wasn't them. <laughs> but there are a number of parents who know we're a good program and feel it's so superior to the club they put their children in, and they don't adhere to what they commit to. And 
They don't understand that this was set up as a competitive team, and the club is there for those that don't want their children to compete, or don't want them to be overly involved with chess. Like any top team, and we are one of the top teams in the country, obviously, or we wouldn't have won three nationals. We may not be number one right now in California. Candidly, Mission San Jose still outshines us with the, with the way they approach it, but they approach it differently in some way. Uh, but I'll get into that in a minute. Um, the, being a top team means, you know, we have to constantly work with the children. And as I said, at the end of last year, well, I didn't say it, but at the end of last year, I set a deadline, like I always do. And last year it was a little early because I didn't know if we would be going to the States or not. As you know, um, the, for the last three years, White Belt Chess has been boycotting anything that Salman Azar, whose organization is Bay Area Chess, is running. And I won't go into the details there, but in simple terms, we've had three parents who filed complaints with the national organization for things that happened, and all of that's online. But the fact was that that tournament was going to be April 5th, so I set the deadline, since we didn't know if we were going, for April 5th to complete the sixth tournament requirement. There were 12 families that did not. So I extended it to April 27th, which was what we had it last year, and I still had a problem convincing and calling and writing letters. And while well, I finally got... 10 families to go of the, uh, third of, of the 12, I still had to remove two people from the chess program, which meant, as you've read, I hope, um, they're not welcome back at any point into the chess program. Again, to me, a commitment is a commitment. I said before, I am a teacher, and I've learned a long time ago that if you say something, you have to adhere to it. If you don't say something, that's different, okay? So you don't just tell your kid, or you tell, as a coach, you just don't tell the children, this is what I'm going to do, and then if you don't do it, you're in worse trouble. So I avoid saying things, but when I make, when I make a commitment, I expect that commitment to be held. Um, with that, I also had some problems with the children who were not as involved, yet, involved with the program. Some of them were hanging around outside. The school became very, very concerned. Many of our children were not spending their full time involved with the playing their games at the end after the teaching. They would run outside. This was my fault. I'd let them go out and when they were done. And they were disturbing some of the after school programs and also some of the teachers. The school was very concerned, and on top of that, the new facilities director um, of the facilities organization of the district became concerned not only with what was happening here, but with other schools, and Jaime, one of the custodians and others, who were talked to about being involved in what we had to do. So, I had to clamp down. The, one of the easiest ways to clamp down was to take those children who were the novices and junior varsity and let them out earlier and be sure that they were picked up, okay? Instead of hanging around till 5.30, they simply were not playing till 5.30, and they were causing trouble as well for those people who were taking their game seriously. On top of that as well, being a top team, one of the things we do, as those of you here before, is that our coaches, after they play, if there's time, will analyze their games. It's one of the best things we can offer with the top coaches we have, they will sit down with them and go over their games. That was not working for some of the people who were new to the team. They really weren't concerned. But more so, it didn't give our coaches enough time to really spend on a game with our top players. So, I divided it into three groups to see how it'll work. It's an experiment. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But right now, you've seen, we've got a novice, we've got a junior varsity team, we've got a varsity team. Um, how, does, how is it selected? Well, it's simple. 
as uh, well as I mentioned Mission Santa. Mission San Jose has a where they test the children to come on. I will allow anybody who's qualified to come on to the team. That's the purpose of the novice team, to see if they like it, if they want to work with it. The novice team are for new players, unrated, and those under 500. Yes, during the year, if they go above 500, they can move to the JV, or if, luckily they go uh, above the limit for each of the age groups. Now, 500 for first graders will actually put them on the varsity if they want to be. Okay, but to be on the uh, varsity at fourth, fifth grade, you need a thousand rating. Okay. However, we also have an ideal rating that really is set for an elite status, and that's based upon the top players at the nationals coming in. And we have four players now that are elite status, and they will be getting special jackets similar to the ones they give for the USA teams. And the reason for that is to inspire the other children to try and achieve. And by the way, for those that may not be aware of it, if they have a rating over a thousand, they are made the honor roll, and as a member of the honor roll, they will get a cap that says honor roll, white belt chest on it, that some of them do wear. I have developed black hats and pink hats. None of the boys have chosen pink hats. However, a number of the girls have wanted the black caps. And that's fine. Okay. We also have a Hall of Fame. And that's listed there. The Hall of Fame are the special individuals that have achieved all that information is online. I can let you look at it. Uh, I mean, you can go look at it. I don't have to go through it. But there are only 27 people of about the 3,000 have gone through the program that are at presently within the Hall of Fame. So I've set some what we call positive incentives, I hope, for those that really have a true interest to move into you know, the upper level. And I think that's important rather than saying you can't play, you shouldn't be here, or anything of that nature. I just uh, as a school teacher have uh, differences, you know, uh, problems with that. I was going to say differences with mission San Jose philosophy, but I won't. I didn't say that. All right. Um, the junior varsity team is anybody who is in competition, has a rating over 500, and it varies according to the you know various levels. But above 1,100, anybody above 1,100 must go to varsity or they should not be in Y belt chess. If we're spending the time, we're send, spending the energy to build a top-notch competitive team, then we've spent the years putting into it, they have to commit to the varsity team. In other words, that's a very strong commitment that had not been there previously. What is that commitment? The varsity team is committed to go to the Nationals, which will be in, um, in Dallas, I say again, but was there once before two years, three years ago. In da Dallas, in between May 8th and May 11th. That is a firm commitment that has been made by the parents for those on the varsity team. The varsity team will stay till 5.30 because they're going to get that extra little training that they will need to be competing in Dallas. As far as the state championships are concerned, once again, we do not know who's running them. However, all the players, novice, junior varsity, or varsity, are committed to go to the state championships if the team goes. One will be in December. The date hasn't been assigned. And at this juncture, I have no idea who's running it. Although last year, Berkeley Chess School ran it, and we did go. My hope is they will run it again. But last year, the April states were run by <coughs> uh, and organized by Dr. Salman Ajar, and we did not go. Okay, so it's been three years since we have not gone. Um, my hope is somehow or other he will not organize it. I'll say it right now, though. Um, with the boycott, and call it what you will, if you want it's a boycott, or we're just not going, the parents have committed a low. I told any parent that wants to go, 
They can, just they have to remove the name Y Belt Chess. I'm not going to say don't go to the tournaments and they should not wear the Y Belt. Like um, Dr. Kerr is saying, it's, it's really damage, you know, as, as a chance. Y Belt is still a good team. We want to get those state champions, that's for sure. So, um, when, what we're going to see the first one, when you're going to the um, state champion, you are going to see lots of people, lots of kids, aggressive kids, plus aggressive parents. Then you're going to see why, yeah, why, <laughs> yeah, it's going to go crazy, it's like a zoo. So the director's temper has to benefit the tournament instead of hurting the tournament. Uh, tournament. So it's, it's, a, it's a combination of all this reason, that's why we decide to go on that. And as I said, you go um, so let's talk about the tournaments a little. There is a requirement, six tournaments I mentioned, plus the states. Now, the girls must go to the girls' states. That we've gone to for a number of years. That's on Serafina's birthday, February 1st. <laughs> I know that for a reason. This is my birthday, too. But um, I will be there. The girls will be there. That is a requirement for all the girls. And we have a good group. We've won the divisions from time to time, oh, well, every time they've had one, we've at least won and won. We've had a good number of girls who have come out as state champions over the years, including her daughter, who took um, took it twice. And they have the best playground, by the way. <laughs> and, oh, we didn't mention where. It's St. Mark's, yeah. Marin County. Yes. So it is a little trip from yes. here. And I had a really good About an hour. But that, that, that is a requirement. And since the girls would have to go to the other state championships, the girls' state championship will count as one of the six. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it, they, they go to any six tournaments that are United States Chess Federation tournaments. The novice can go to any six. Okay. The JV can go to, must go to six. But four of them only can be quads. That includes the white belt quads. Two of them, therefore, must be what's a Swiss tournament. Most of you know what they are, but then very rapidly, the quads have four people at a table, and they play only with those four people, all within the same basic skills. The Swiss is such that they play everybody in the division. So if they're all, if it's a nine-year-old division, they play top players, low players, everybody, win, lose. Of course, if they keep losing, they won't be playing all the top players. That's okay. You are going to have a Swiss, right? I am? The, the three in the spring? <laughs> yeah, in the spring. Six tournaments, two of which must not be, as I said, quads. Only four can. Varsity. Only three can be quads. And two tournaments of the three that are not quads, which would mean Swiss, must be with a time control of game 90, which is a very long time control. Of those two or three, one of them must be an open tournament where there are adults in them. There's a double reasoning for that. One of the reasoning is they go over their games often with adults. It's a much more competitive atmosphere. Another reason is simple. The Nationals give you a two game and two hour time control, which is actually four hours for the for the kids, and playing four hour games. So it's a building of that basis. And that's, you know, important to develop that structure. Um, and the third reason for players, or players generally going into adult tournaments, and specifically playing up a division at times, that they really do well and their ratings jump even if they don't win the tournament. Part of that is because many of the older players are afraid of the kids. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> more embarrassing than losing to a young player. <laughs> and, you know, I think we had one interview, I don't remember what it was with the TV cameras and or something of that nature, one of our kids, and she said it. Why do you like playing adults? Because I'd like to see them suffer. Make a note that the state championships are two days for most of our kids. And therefore, those have to be planned in advance. The nationals are minimum three days. Depends on your flight. Okay, because they play on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 
I have some information there for mm -hmm. you guys. This year we're going to play in Dallas, which the fly is very easy. Sunday we finish at 7. Actually, there's a fly living there at 9.40. So we can definitely come back on Sunday if we plan to go to National. Um, Friday we don't play until 1 o'clock in the afternoon. But then I don't like to kids to go in, you know, wake up very early and then, you know, do the plans and then get there. But actually the fly itself is only three and a half hours to Dallas. So it's much easier than Nashville's or, you know, any other places. Dallas is actually pretty easy. Um, and the hotel, they haven't posted the chest rate yet. It's about $120. The fly itself from San Jose is about $360. From San Francisco is about $310. So you can kind of plan just because the child is not on varsity doesn't mean they can't go to the nationals because there are, are other divisions there. Yes. So if you want to make the choice, I mean, we're pushing nationals for varsity, which is the open and it's the only title, championship title that it is a true championship title. You can't use the title championship for the other divisions. For example, they have an under 800 and under 1,000 sections. Okay, so there are other areas um, that are available. If you become interested, you want to see what it's like. And Dallas, as we indicated, is fairly reasonable to get to. And you said it's around 300 right now, around 10. 310 and 360. Yeah. Depends where you want to apply. So, you know, you know you're going, you're committed. Now, you know, you might the early, yeah. By the way, let me also identify that many people have put down that they can carpool to tournaments here. Yes. So, we're going to try and get some of that as well so that. Um, you know, if you have, you, your child has some friends and their parents don't want to go to a tournament, well, you know, you're willing to. And uh, as I, most of the kids are good. I mean, I was joking about the boys, but, you know, there are one or two that can cause, you know, some problems. But as a whole, um, you know, we haven't had any major problems. I had one problem at a Nationals that I'll still never forget. And we were in Portland and they got free transportation. In round five, one of our players didn't show up. I had no idea what happened. He was staying with one of the other parents. He got on the free transportation, the train, and took it to the airport, right around the city. And he came How old? Back. He was, he was fifth grade. I mean, it wasn't a ten-year. I mean, an, an eight-year-old, seven-year-old. Okay. But still, <laughs> and then of course he gets kicked out of the tournament because he didn't show for the round. So you know, there. That was my. You know, <laughs> all right. That's why I, I stopped just why not? encouraging kids to come without parents. But if they're going with other parents, it's safer in the long run. I realize that it's difficult for people to give up their first grader or, or kindergartner to go with somebody else. I understand it, but for fourth, fifth graders, sixth graders, there shouldn't really be a problem. We, we, we took a whole group to Portland of about 12 kids. And Atlanta, kids. too. Huh? We, have, um, we took kids to Atlanta. Six to Atlanta. Yeah. Six kids that weren't with parents? Mm -hmm. Well, no, like... Yeah, we had three, four, I think. Two three, or three. three or four. four. Yeah, four. three or four. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's no worries, yeah. personally, of them going to any of our teachers. Yeah. I think they're all solid, probably. Oh. So it, it doesn't bother me. Um, however, on the team this year, <coughs> I can say at least for the novice players, we have a lot of novice players. And so basically, I have traditionally taken all those new to the team and the younger ones, but, um, because I'm not on the level of our teachers by any means, but to build them. And with that, this year, we've got so many that the People who are pretty much on the novice have been divided between myself, Yuanga, who is a woman's um, feed yeah. master, and um, Ike, okay. who is a, a national senior. master. Yeah, he's what? National master. National master, yeah. I don't know how he's, I don't know if he's reached his not to be uh, senior master yet, but uh, Ike's uh, went to Mission San Jose High School. He's from Armenia and a really good teacher too, um, and works well with the younger kids. So I've got three teachers basically handling the novice, so there is that sort of division. There won't be any novice in the other three teachers' classes. Yeah, the rules. I haven't touched on homework kind of thing, but 
They play the same process. Okay. Now, if they go to tournaments, mm -hmm. they can't play for Y Bell at those tournaments that give team trophies. Okay. But they can put down Y Bell for other tournaments so they don't wind up playing Y Bell children okay. if the numbers are there. The problem, as I say, with many tournaments is they don't have a lot of players, and so, you know, we'll wind up playing each other, and that's not, they play each other all the time. They don't take it as seriously as Carl will tell you. Well, you know, they're, they're having fun, they know their friends, they know how they play, we're here yeah, they drop too. So when they're playing other kids, and that's the reason for the tournaments, they get nervous. I don't know this kid, I don't know what he's going to do, you know, he looks scary. He's making faces at me. <laughs> on on Fridays, uh, in Novice school, they also get rated. Um, they also get what? Rated? No, they're not. The games? Rated. Rated. What do you mean rated? Well, that's, that's the, the varsity group this year is going to be rated. The, but not the Novice. Yeah, yeah, no, the Novice is going to be rated. Um, I, oh, yes, that's what you mean. Yeah, no. Um, what's going to happen is the Novice group <coughs> can only play about 15 minute games, 30 minutes, basically. So they're going to be rated as quick chess, action chess. Oh, you are going to rate that? Yes. Okay. <coughs> okay. So on homeworks, uh, you had a requirement... Yeah, I'm going to talk about it. Blitz, when is it a good time to get the kids into Blitz? Do you want them to go into Blitz tournaments, Don? Blitz tournaments? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's fun. Yes. Um, That's about it. But, you know, I would say that if there are players who are on a high level, there's no problem with the Blitz. The problem is they play so fast anyway that if they start going to many blitz tournaments, it's going to carry over on the trade. I mean, I have nothing against blitz, but you know, for most of the players under a thousand, yeah, they're not playing 90 minutes. So I would avoid the blitz at this particular time with them, just so, just for safety. Yeah. Right, let me let me get the homework. Homework again. We have required homework rapidly. So I'm running out of time. Novice. They need to record their games, except if they're in kindergarten through second grade. They need to be written down, notated on the forms, and they are to keep those at, at home in a folder. And I will ask them to bring it in from time to time. They will have to do 40 problems from the Chess Magnet School or from ChessHomework.com. We will be checking. The ChessHomework.com comes to us automatically and goes on the system. Chess Magnus School, which we, we, we pay for, or you pay for, um, we have to do manually. Okay. 40 per week. So 40 per week. Right. Now, minimum. Minimum. <laughs> <laughs> However, if they run over two hours and you're really concerned about their schoolwork, contact me and let me know and we'll see what we can work out. Okay, I want a translation. They have to do a minimum of two hours homework a week for the novice. A week. A week. Not a day. <laughs> <laughs> Is the chess magnet school uh, going to ch uh, basically change? Because for last year, he had beginner status there. So now for novice, are you going to they, they, continue? They can, do, they can do whatever they want. Okay. Uh, they can say various areas. Um, the, some of the instructors will be giving out homework on it as well. Is, is this No, the homework link isn't there yet because we have we have to activate it. We can't. I can't activate it until I. Well, now I can. I've got to give them the list of all the people and haha, <laughs> Joyce. Um, another job she's got with the Chess Manga School. We've got to add all the new teachers for the club and put the children that are new in. However, their previous passwords for those who've been here before will work. So that's not a particular issue. It's the large new group that's going to have to wait on it. Um, I looked up chess homework right now because some people forgot their passwords and I can't get them. He's pulled everything off. That's a success chess program. So I, I can't get to those passwords. But if you have the chess manga school last year, that password will work. You can send. In fact, it's good. Um, well, it was good. He, he actually extended us till October. But it, it went through the summer and will continue through the summers. Sorry, did you say chess or dot com or dot com? Dot com. Chess homework dot com. Right. But as I say, right now we I can't
is a little more extensive. They have to place their games in a computer program um, as they did before. They need to annotate it there, but they don't have to turn it in every Friday. They are to keep their games in a folder as of a novice, and when I ask for them, they're to bring them in. So they will print them out, and I will ask for specifics. Um, so you mentioned about um, chesshongdong.com. Is that for new students? Yeah, mm -hmm. everyone. But you, everyone. Yeah, everyone can use it. Well, actually, it, it goes up to a certain level, so for the higher students, it's not worth it. We have some students, well, we have one student specifically who finished all of Chess Magnet and all of Chess Homework. And he's not the top students, point-wise, but he did it all. He will be able to go to chesslectures.com. We've got that along with Chess Magnet School that came in. So they've got the videotapes. And of course, some of our higher rated players can use that. So for the chesshomework.com, the enrolled, when the child enrolls, you'll give the credentials how to use it? It's not, it's, it's, it's very simple. I, I don't think you're going to need anything. All you need is your password and go in. And that can be given. Thing, both Chess Magnet and Chess Homework is, you know, um, is user, user friendly, let's use it. But you give the username to the for an answer? Huh? When the child enrolls in the class, you give the username and password? Yeah, he'll get a password. Okay. Yeah, he'll get a password and an ID name. Yeah. Okay. Um, the JV only basic difference is they've got 60 chess problems to do per week, and their minimum time is four hours. The chess bar, the chess, the junior varsity. Maximum. Maximum time. No. Yeah, maximum. Well, minimum. Time. Minimum. No, you're saying that they go over four hours. If they go over four hours. They can come to me. They don't have to come to me. If they can't get the four hour, if they go over it, they should come to me and talk if they need to. Some of them will enjoy doing it. The varsity, they will do the homework the way we did last year. They will record their games. They will get their comments from their instructors that are going through them. They will write the comments on the back. They will go home. They will put it in the computer. And they will turn in that homework with, the, with their annotation sheets. Uh, either on Friday or send it via email, which is fine. So that that hasn't changed. They are also to do 60 problems um, as well, and they don't have a limited amount of time. But if the 60 hours runs into at 60, 60 hours, hours. If the 60 <laughs> problems run into a real long period of time, then let me know. I mean, I may be strict, but I can understand when parents cry. <laughs> <laughs> Any final questions? Anybody leaving us now? I'm at the team. One more question. For the new we just starting out for the first time in the team, where do we come Thank you. Yeah, no problem. If you want to know, like, what's going to be good, start with.